Kakanaka, Jamani Samari, the Zimbabwe. This is the Zimbabwe national anthem. This is the instrumental version. It's a beautiful song. With tonal lyrics, from the lyrics, it's also got English lyrics. We used to have a different um, national anthem before independence. Uh, I think when South Africa became independent, they decided they wanted their song back, or something like this. But I love my country, and I wanted to say this in order to say what I said that we're going to be talking about today. In case you don't know, Jimmy Tete Rasta. And what I basically wanted to do today was to really discuss our issues as um, people wanting a solution in our country. I hope that today's the volume is better than what it was yesterday. Uh, let's have a look. I hope that's better than what it was yesterday. So today I wanted to just talk about um, how we can be part of the solution. Because as you know, there's a bit of posturing that's going on on the political field at the moment. Uh, I know the MDC were doing their marches with the opposition. And now we've had the uh, One Million Man March. We had other things going on in between. We had Pastor Larry Flag, Pastor Ivan, uh, doing his thing. And I think of everything that's on the uh, buffet of politics in Zimbabwe. I identify more with this flag. I'm not a political person. As uh, many of you know, I'm a human rights activist. I'm less active as I used to be before. But what I wanted to do is to just talk about no matter which your pol what your political persuasion is, we've got to find a middle ground where we're trying to uh, gain solutions in terms of where we're going as a country. So, you know, I wanted to just uh, focus this in order to get to where we want to go. So today I said we're going to be talking about business, um, and I wanted to dedicate the time to the Mbira Center. And I'll tell you why. Because when I went to Zimbabwe uh, at the beginning of the year, I was their first student. So I'll come into that when I go into that, that, the schedule that's designed for that. But for people who are in diaspora or anywhere in the world at all, you will realize that there are lots of opportunities that you can actually use to better your own country. I got my friend Kwabena online. Kwabena is from Ghana. I've actually worked with him. He's a really nice guy. And as you know, Zimbabwe and Ghana have got a symbiotic relationship. Our first lady was from Ghana. In fact, I've made it my business to actually make friends with Ghanaians. And they're the most beautiful people, lovely temperament. Um, yeah, and I was almost the employer for the Ghanaians um, once upon a time. But that's by the by. What I'm trying to say is that we are pan-African at heart, and we need to be working together in order to bring about solutions. I also want to make an invitation to my non-African-looking brothers and sisters, because a lot of things have been done historically in your name, in the name of the country where you, you reside from, but it's not your own spirit. There were a lot of human rights violations. There were a, a situation of colonialism. There was slavery. All those things disrupted Africa's development. Yesterday was um, we were re recognizing and we were uh, celebrating Africa Unity Day. A lot of the people here in the UK were business as usual. But how can we ever get to the point of forgive and forget if we don't right the wrongs of the past? So I'm sitting here in my garden today. I've got that wheelchair there. Um, I, I only put it there because I was going to do some work. And then I thought, oh, I better do Tete Rasta because I'm going to be on the road. And I've had some really useful feedback from you guys saying, please do Tete Rasta when you're not driving because then we can then we can hear you. And somebody's saying, can we have more volume, please? What I'll have to do is raise my voice so you can hear me a bit better. Is that any better? I shall simply give you a shout out. Okay, brilliant. So the thing that I wanted to, to encourage today is that whether you're white and whether you're, you're brown, because this, these colors were defined by other people's terms and they don't really describe who we are. Let me see. This one is a, a, a thing. This is black, okay? This is brown. This is black. This is brown. This is black. This is brown. It's a little different in that. This is yellow. Today, the Rimwa juice, mango, and apple juice. So when we call each other by names that describe the external appearances, what we are doing is dividing and ruling. If you ever, any of you have done history or read history, you'll have come across the work of William Lynch. Nasty piece of work, that man. He's American. I'm going to post some things on Tete Rasta page to show you the methodology and the strategy that he actually devised so that he can rule and divide people. Today, uh, in 2016, we find 
that our own political leaders are using some of those strategies to divide us. As Zimbabweans, all we want is to have better lives. Yesterday I talked about, although my recording was poor, we want water. We want water that doesn't go finished. We want electricity all the time, electricity that is not disrupted. We want roads, roads that are not death traps. Please, Ndapota, is that a big ask? Yesterday I put on my, um, on my live stream uh, as I was driving through a bridge called Seventh Bridge in Wales. Such a mammoth technological feat. Now, there's 15 billion which is unaccounted for. I'm sure if somebody had really looked after that money, we could have built one of our own over the, the, the Victoria Falls or Musia Tuna and had space to spare and sorted out our hospitals and so on. I'm loving that thumbs up that's there. I'm passionate about what I do. My friends were like, oh, uh, my Chico, if you start talking politics on Tete Rasta, you're going to lose viewership. The truth of the matter is this. I'm not doing Tete Rasta for political traction. I'm not doing Tete Rasta to build a career. We can forget that. I'm an independent mind, an independent thinker, and I will say exactly what I want. If people are like me, uh, I will write what I want. I will speak what I want, whatever the consequences. I've been doing this since the late 1990s to teach um, human rights activism. And, um, you know, I count each day as joy because I got to live a day longer than what I would have done. So what I want to do, coming back to the crux of the matter, let's talk to our friends from the countries where we are, even our neighbors, if you're in Zimbabwe, if you're in South Africa. Tell them why we are aggrieved. Why are we waving this flag? It's not that we are being silly. And Pastor Iwan is a genius, actually, because what he's done is he's stolen the, this flag agenda from the politicians and given it to us as the citizens so that we are bold and we speak. Uh, one of my friends wrote on one of his um, tweets, for every Goliath there is a stone. So I know who Goliath is, and Goliath is going to fall. And Goliath is corruption. Goliath is poverty. Goliath is the disruption of services. Goliath is the situation where we've got people that are dying in the hospital because there's no medication. How can someone go to hospital to receive care and all they get is a death sentence? That's what's happening in Zimbabwe. And I'm not exaggerating it. And I've seen it with my own eyes. We lost a child in January. There was a strike. The doctors are not getting paid. And the doctors delivered the baby and left my sister-in-law with her first month preterm baby. The baby survived for 30 minutes and there was nobody to take the baby, put the baby in the incubator. Anybody who's done health knows that a five-month-old pregnancy is viable. That's just my personal experience. I get emotional about it. Yes. So uh, Pastor Ivan gets emotional about it. How can we not get emotional about the issues that really matter? You understand? I was in an accident in Zimbabwe in January. My artery in my foot got cut. That finger, the one that delivers, uh, it is the vital artery to give us blood. Five centimeters worth of a cut. My sister in laws rushed me to the hospital. Until they could see that we could pay, I would have blessed to death. But the health system in Zimbabwe is perfect. It works even better than the health system that I work in here in the UK. And I'm here to tell the tale. So why should it be that if you have money, you live? And if you don't have money, you don't live. And that was a private hospital, by the way. So this is what this flag is about. I can't afford to get on a plane to go to Singapore to have my eyes tested. I don't want to do that. But how much does it cost for a whole entourage of people to go to Singapore to accompany the, the first family for an eye test? Could we not channel those resources towards uh, basic health care? In 1980, this is historical, did you know that Zimbabwe's health system was the best health system in all of Africa? Did you know? Did you know that the Zim dollar was 1 is to 10 to the pound sterling? Did you know? That's not to say Ian Smith was great. That's not to say you want to go back to that time. But anybody who's got a good vehicle, and I know a lot of you guys who drive mushy cars, I can see Vincent Fatima here there, you're not going to leave your uh, top of the range Mercedes Benz not going for service, not maintaining it. And that's basically what has happened to Zimbabwe. So that's what this flag is all about, in case you're thinking, oh, this is political, oh, this is... It's not, it's personal. 
and it's not going away because even when you're in diaspora, if people struggle at home, they will be right with you to say, please, can you help us out? Please, can you send money? Please, can you send meditation? Things that are really basic. Since the GNU, we've had a situation where the shelves are full, beautiful. I spend a lot of time in Zimbabwe. It's a haven. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I wouldn't stop going. And what I'm not saying is that Zimbabwe is totally bad. Please get me right. What I'm saying is that we can do better. What I'm saying is that we can get rid of the rot. It's like me, me, like my teeth. I've got an extraction here, I've got an extraction here. Those teeth needed to go because they were giving me bad breath when I was a child. And also they were causing me to have pain. So the poor management of the country is causing us to have pain. We need a new system of revival. If there's some fearful reform and reform from within, let them. We watched the uh, One Million Man March. As a human rights activist, I probably been thinking, oh, and then I'm going to the negative. But as a person and as a mother and a Tetarasta, the show of people, the show of people at the Million Man March shows that if Zanu PF can garner so much support, the next elections is likely to let them win. So we don't want this politics of um, Mugabe must go. What we want is a situation where things are working. There's a complaint about the volume. I'm not sure if I can do anything else, but I've put mine on high. I think it might just be the equipment. So what am I saying now? As an example, we talked about the wheelchair. That's the wheelchair that my aunt passed away. Um, she, the family has driven. I'm just cleaning it because my Maguire was. that they're going to ship it to Zimbabwe so that people can benefit from it. It's those little acts of kindness that are going to bring about the kind of Zimbabwe that we do want. Medical um, equipment. I've been in a situation where you talk to pharmacists, there's medication that is nearly expiring. Ask them, would you like to donate it? And then send them treasure to Zimbabwe, but treasure to people who are going to give those people who cannot afford the medical health care. Because that's what we want. We, I'm championing this flag as part of the solution, not as an agitator that's leading to nothing at all. And part of my motivation is, Teke's job is Kuwaka Musa. I would be so irresponsible if I break down the bridges that are uh, coming forward. So for those politicians out there, don't be looking at me and thinking, ah, we're going to use this um, traction yakete for this. It's not for that. I make my own decisions. I've got executive um, decision making uh, for this thing. But I will say my piece and I will help in as much as I want. Helping with this wheelchair is not for the government, it's for that child with cerebral palsy. And I wonder whether any minister has ever gone to visit any child and a condition are afflicted. So we fly our flag high, we play our uh, national anthem, and we do so with absolute pride. And those people want to my thumbs up if you in the app. Because it's personal, you know, if my brother wakes up in Zimbabwe, what good does that serve? Charity begins at home. So please, let's use this flag as a mantra. Yes, I get one in South Africa. Remember when uh, apartheid was under attack? People talked to their friends, and then people started lobbying the government where they were to say, the situation is not right in Zimbabwe, uh, in South Africa rather. It's wrong there, it's wrong there, it's wrong there, it's wrong there. We don't have everything that's wrong, but there's a persistence of rot that is no longer acceptable. That is my beef, and that is my fight. But in the meantime, I will do as much as I can to be part of the solution, and uh, where possible, I will highlight certain issues. And then when I'm not doing this, I'm having fun and uh, entertaining you, but in life, there are certain things that are serious and that cannot be ignored. So thank you very much for your time. We're still having issues with the volume, so I'm going to try and I think I might just have to buy some equipment here recording so that it is viable. I've been using my phone. Um, I thought not driving will allow the volume to be better, but it's clearly not. Um, update. Somebody offered to do me a logo for Teke Rasta. Somebody has offered to, to help me with the YouTube because funny business, I'm going to do other things and just slice out. And all of you must remember, Kufundirum Kore Kore, so Mwakwa Kore Kore are not the brightest uh, of tribes in Zimbabwe anyway. And uh, there was one other thing, the radio station. The radio show is starting on the 1st of June, and, um, and it's going to be 
be from 2 o'clock until 4 o'clock. And what we're going to do for the first few sessions is look at Jim Dunhall, young musician, uh, promoting their music, interviewing them as well. I'm going to talk to some of the promoters and get hooked up so that uh, we can have that as a platform. Then we're going to be talking to people who are my friends on Facebook to start with, people who've written books, people who um, have got businesses, and people who've got degrees, so that we are mentoring each other and infusing good things. And also, we reach outside. But um, we'll also talk to politicians if and when it's necessary, but with a view of problem solving, not as agitator, and certainly not as uh, allowing people to have political traction. So that's it. That's what my installment. So I'm saying this, this morning, in order to say this. I have got this property here. It's, it's got big ground. So what I want to do now is to do some gardening. I want to do some before and after pictures, and I'll post them on my Facebook page so you can see it is a disaster. A lot of you know that I cook. I went to the Dunstable um, Goat Goat, and I asked them, please can I cook? I want to be selling food and then raising money so that I can buy sanitary stuff for the women that are in Kurubi Maximum Prison. I've got friends in prison, you know. <laughs> so I want to make sure that they're taken care of, those basic things. But the government is doing nothing. So um, they said no. The contract is already taken. I'm going to open up my garden and my house. If you're in the area, you'll be able to book in advance and then order your food on Sundays only. Come through, eat what you like, have some decent conversation with uh, people that are moving on, that are part of the solution, and then you can go to know each other, dancehall, or wherever else you want to go. I'm improvising. Uh, but I used to cook in a pub, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. And a lot of you keep saying, oh, when are you going to start cooking? When are you going to start cooking? So I cook all the time, but I'm going to open my house up uh, for that. So that's going to be coming in middle of June. At the moment, that is an absolute tip and an absolute mess. So you need to sort that out, uh, and then we can start. And I've got some DJ friends as well, you know. I'm going to be asking them to do me favors, uh, such as do a playlist. Before I had the music avenue here in my little humble garden. Can you imagine? Music avenue. They came here to play for us when we were having a soul food extravaganza. That was just for family. So thank you so much for your time. Let's be patriotic. Let us love our country. If we don't love our country, if we don't promote ourselves, who's going to do it for us? And by and large, they don't want us here. So we know that. So thank you so much. I'm going to leave you with a replay of our national anthem, Simu Zamureza.